at least, I want to say six or seven, I think. Okay. If I had wow. to guess. Yeah. So when he says, all right, I'm going to do this, you know, we're going to service these other customers. Did he have a plan on how to get other customers besides rail yards? Or was he just like, ah, that'll do for now and no, we'll figure out the rest really, later? It really was just, just strictly rail yard automation. That's just okay. what, you know. Um, he left a six figure salary for that cause he believed so much that it could be profitable and, wow. um, it was. Yeah. yeah. Um, so d- does, do you remember or like, c- can you, can you account like the first sale? Yeah. Um, our first sale was the belt railway over in Chicago and they're one of the biggest conglomerate classification rail yards in the country. Mm-hmm. They're owned by several different major railroads. Um, so that was our first customer and. So your dad's a tech guy. Obviously, he's got his PhD in computer engineering. Computer think? science, yeah. Computer science. So, is he a salesman too? No. Okay. So who does that sale? Like, how's that work out? Or, or, or is it because you're really the only game in town? So the thing is, we get a lot of people coming to us. Yeah. Or not. Okay. Like we don't. So you don't have to don't, sell it. We don't spend a lot of. We don't spend a lot of our time trying to sell, mainly because we are only three people and. We get enough work coming in usually on a yearly basis that we're busy. we're always busy. Okay. You know, we're usually busy with something. So, and you know, with these kind of contracts, you really only need a few for the year, and they take a long time and they take a lot of focus and effort. So, once we do get a couple, you know, we're good for the year. Usually, hopefully, if we can get if we can you know get a couple, but we've gone years where we don't get any. They're always there's doing contract work. There's always that risk. Sure. That you take when you get these now, contracts. How long do they usually last? Like when really, you get one, how long does it usually take? If we're installing a brand new system, it could take up to six months. Okay. Um, sometimes if it's, you know, modifying a system, it could take a couple months, you know. Now, wh- when that first sale was made, and if you don't want to answer, it's fine. But when the first sale was made, was the product finished? So describe what you mean by was it finished? <laughs> what was it a... That's, so one, what, what that's was one tech guy talking to another tech yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so what, what, what was it like a minimum, minimal v- viable product or was it like a full-fledged... Or where were we? Oh, where were a, we at when when the sale was already made? It was a full fledged product. It was it was complete. It was complete. It was complete. It was tested. It was working, and it was suitable for that application. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yeah, because because yeah. uh, you, you hear the stories right where like you make the sale, but it's not necessarily there. Like, but then but <laughs> then like the upside for the customer is that that while the the product isn't finished, they actually have the ability to make some modifications. So. So yeah. like, like they can actually give you some input on we did, what they'd like to see. We did make some modifications because every customer wants something different. Um, you know, not, you know, even though we have a working product that we, you know, it's a software suite and, you know, the hardware that goes with it to communicate with the software. But, you know, we, we, we have that product, but it's always going to be a different application depending on what the customer wants. We might have to make changes. For example, that customer wanted us to add the ability to control a crossing gate that they have inside their um, inside their yard for, for, for vehicles, for employee vehicles that have to drive around through the rail yard. It was dangerous to be driving trucks over tracks because it's a hump yard. They classified those cars by driving them literally up onto a hill, pulling a pin and releasing it. And once the train is released, it's hard to stop it sometimes. So, and there <laughs> okay. were, and you had you guys, want, I could uh, see that. you had guys and employees and trucks who were constantly driving them, you know, in front of that rolling, you know, that rolling car and they're like, I can make it. Yeah. So they, they, they put a little gate. <laughs> well, in. when you said antiquated, I didn't, you know, you said we had some antiquated technology in our rail yards. I'm like a, pulling a pin and just letting it fly downhill. Seems That's pretty, pretty antiquated. antiquated. Yeah. <laughs> but, but if you think about it, it, there's no, you know, you're saving on fuel. You're not, oh yeah. You're not, yeah. I it, guess gravity so. is yeah. a great way to move a very, very heavy car. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good point. And it, does it just slam into the other one and hook, no. hook so together? No. So there's uh, wheel retarders. Um, they're hydraulic. I be, no, they're pneumatic uh, wheel retarders, and they're these big, long set of clamps that it's kind of like on a car. Your brakes on a car. It's the same same theory, but it's a it's a a long strip of clamps on each side of the track, and they have them positioned throughout the uh, throughout on each track. And the computer system that they use it's actually a very complex system for humping. Uh, cars it takes into account the weight of the car what uh, i think what type of car it is um where it's going which track how how full that track is so it knows how fast it needs to be going it takes wind speed into direction 
uh, into consideration. Oh, okay. So these clamps are automated to clamp it down to a certain speed based on which which track it's going into and, and how far it needs to go into that track. Do you guys work with those as well, like the automation of those? I would love to, but we don't. Okay. We don't work with hump yard systems, but I would that would be a, a great that would be a great thing to get into it, but it's very expensive. It takes okay. a lot of working capital to test a system and to come up with a you know, you'd almost have to have your own little private rail yard to try it out. Oh yeah, that's, yeah. that's a good point. Yeah, because you don't you can't just walk into a major yard and be like, well, let, I, let's give it a shot. You know, hey, can I play with this for a while? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> can I have this? this role? Can I have this? There's role? no yeah. uh, hazardous chemicals in this one, are there? No. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> do you guys install them too? Like, do you did you go to Chicago and install your hardware or? Yeah, we okay. actually drove it there. Our first sale, we drove it because we didn't want to. We didn't want to screw it up. We didn't want to ship it. So we, we threw it all in the back of an SUV that we rented, and we drove it all the way up to Chicago. Okay. Was there any, like, fake it till you make it, like we've done this before? Or was it like, hey, guys, this is our first time? Well, like- I, I think this is, like, really the first automation in general, right? So my dad had been part of many installs with GE. He understood okay. the product. He understood Wait, okay. everything that was involved with it. He understood the industry. He understood the people in the industry. So... When I joined, I was kind of freaking out because I was, you know, I had never done this before. I'm not, I could see I'm that. not, yeah, like, I just quit college for this. Like, <laughs> I no, I finished that. college. Yeah, okay. I finished. Yeah. <laughs> I, but, um, I, I just quit law school for this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, it's, I was kind of, I was kind of learning as I went personally. Okay. He was, he's as cool as a cucumber. I mean, he's, he's, you know, I could see that. Like it was, yeah. I was, you know, I talked to him, my voice might crack a little, you know, but, um, I figured it out, you know. Yeah, I I remember doing my first implementation on my own as well, and you just feel like you're on an island. Yeah. So you're just freaking out. You're like, oh man, this it, thing better work. I think it's like any job, really. You know, yeah. if you go on and, the job, if you have a new a new career that you're entering, and you know, you get the job, and you know, you walk in, you don't know what's going on. You have to figure it out. You know, you could be as educated as the next person and learn everything in school, but doing it in person in real life is totally different than what you learn in school. It, yeah, it, it definitely now, had to. Um, now you can throw me in the deep water, and I'm like, it's fine. <laughs> but it definitely out. had to be nice to at least know that you had somebody that you truly trusted to be your, your sounding board when you felt like you might be off or something. Cause he did a lot of the talking. If you work for someone you don't, you just started working for, you didn't really know him, you might be scared to even ask him a question if it, you were going to sound like you're an idiot or something's wrong. I, but at I'm least sure he I did. Could, I'm sure I did. He threw me into the, the piranha pool a few times, you know, <laughs> but, but you have to do that, you know. It's, yeah, that's the best way that's to learn. That's the best way to learn. Um, I was really nervous back then, you know, but after that job, I kind of learned the language. I learned the lingo because I didn't know anything about rail yards. And there's a lot of terminology. And luckily, you know, rail yard employees are very laid back people. They're very easygoing for the most part. That's awesome. And, you know, so it was. And they're union guys most of the time. They they're are like, union. Hey, Take as long as you want. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, uh, I'm on the clock. 